This video is about the new automatic calibration software for the JVC DILA laser projectors for 2022. I'm Chris. I'm Rob. Let's get to it. So the first thing we have to do is set the network control for the projector so it'll talk to your PC to do the calibration. So we need to set the network password and the network IP address on the projector. So first go to network, um, go down to network password, We've already entered JVC sales and the network password. It needs to be eight characters or more, eight to 10 characters. So make sure that you put it in eight characters or it won't set correctly. So once you're done, just hit okay. Hit yes, and that'll save the password. The next thing you have to do is make sure the DHCP client is off, which it is. And the default IP address is 192.168.0.2. The other thing you need to make sure is your control for SDDTP control is off also, because that will only work with network control of control four. So you won't be able to talk to the projector correctly if this is turned on. So make sure that's off. But once you get done setting the IP address, anytime you make a change, you need to come down and hit set. And then that will set the password and the network IP address for the projector. So a couple other settings you need to set on the projector is to make sure that the dynamic dimming is turned all the way off. You don't want it in mode one or mode two. And that's in the more settings in the picture menus. So you can turn the LD power on high or normal. Um, whichever one you probably typically use is going to be the best one overall as, as you do the calibration. Um, the dynamic control, you need to turn off. And the aperture, you need to turn all the way open uh, for the best uh, color calibration. So. so the first thing you need to do is set up the IP address, the static IP address on your computer so that it will talk to the projector correctly. Um, so if you go to local area connection for the network port that you have and you just go down to properties, go down to internet protocol version 4, TCP IV4, and then hit properties again. And you're going to set the IP address to 192.168.0.1. And then the sub NAS is going to be 255 or 255. Yeah, 255, 255, 255, zero. Hit OK to set that. You don't need to set the default gateway. It's not needed. Hit close, back out of, out of your network setups. Once you bring up the DILA projector calibration software 13 version one, which works with all the new models. So we're talking the RS 4100, 3100, 2100, 1100, NZ9, NZ8, NZ7, and the MP5. Um, we'll work with all the new models. So the first thing you do is go to setting and set up the communication control. So again, this address here must match the IP address of your projector. So the network IP address we set on the projector is 192.168.0.2. Um, the password here must match the password that you set up in the OSD prior to this. So we change this to JVC sales, all caps. And hit tab. So we're going to do a full gamma and color calibration. Um, the gamma setup you want to do typically quality so you get the most bits as possible. Um, your screen size, you can pick a screen size depending on how big your screen is. Uh, this is diagonal. Um, you know, we're going to just go with the 100 inch. We're pretty close to that right here. And then viewing distance, you can put in the, the distance. It's not important that you do, um, but you can put that in there. Uh, you can put in the serial number here. Uh, once you've done all that, you're going to hit check. 
and it says connect OK, which is good. If you get an NG in there, that means no good. So either your IP address is typically wrong or your password is incorrect. So if you get uh, no connection or no good, um, please check those. Those are typically what's missing. Um, in the setup control of the projector. This calibration software will automatically back up anything you do to the projector. Um, so that way if you do mess it up, you can restore it by hitting the import backup file. So if you look at the file path here, this will take you to the location where it's saved at. Um, I don't think I've done anything yet, so there's nothing saved, so there's nothing really to show here. but. Um, but once you've saved it, you can go to import and you can go to that file location and then pick up that back fi backup file. And typically it will say a niche file. So it'll say NIT here. So that's the file typically that's originally uh, backed up of all the data on the projector. So that way if you do mess something up, you can always get back to square one when you first got the projector from the, from the factory. So. so once you've done that, you're just gonna hit okay, and that will set up your communication between the software and the projector. The first thing we're gonna do is go over to calibration and click on there. So today we're using the Spider X, or you can use the iPro 2. But today we're using the Spider X, which is the white uh, calibration sensor. And these you can buy online for less than a couple hundred dollars at the most. So click on the Spider X. It's going to bring up the alignment menu. And it'll take just a second. You'll see the screen kind of change colors. It'll throw up some internal test patterns. So when you line up the sensor, it needs to be at a 45 degree angle to the screen and make sure the shadow is not um, in the middle of the image. So like we have it now, probably about 12 inches away typically will give you enough uh, light output so you're not oversaturating the meter and provide enough light output so it gets an accurate reading. But you know, you really just want to kind of line it up it doesn't have to be accurate, but what you're going to look at is that the box is just around the area of the screen. Um, if you're too far back, this box is going to move way out here. So if I move it way back here, you can see the box moves way out of the area. So you want that yellow box to be kind of centered on the screen or close to it. So that tells you you have enough light output to, to activate the meter correctly. And I kind of just line it up about 12 inches away and point it at the center of the screen. So that way you just kind of look down and you can see it's pretty much center screen. You don't have to be exact for this. Um, it's going to calibrate it to the center portion of the screen. So. so once you've done that, we have this Spider X centered on the screen. And again, um, you're not measuring directly onto the meter, you're measuring reflecting off the screen and towards the meter. Um, so that's why it's tilted at an angle. So bring up the picture mode settings here on the next part. So when you initially calibrate the projector, um, it's kind of better to do it in SDR and do a global overall adjustment of the projector for color, gamma, and it'll just give it a general calibration of the projector um, to get it as accurate as possible. Um, the one real big advantage of the calibration software, it gives you a 32 point gamma. So it does a much better job than if you had someone manually come and do the, the gamma calibration. Um, so right now we have it set up for SDR natural, which is the default SDR uh, menu. You want to set the clear motion drive to off, aperture all the way to zero. LD power normally is going to be on high for most of your settings. You can set it to normal if you like, so that's your preference. 
Uh, the color filter is in normal mode. And then the calibration result, if you double click on this, then you can set individual or reflect to all. When you hit reflect to all, it's going to do an overall general calibration of the projector to give you the best overall gamma, color, and color imagery. So we want to do reflect to all, so we're calibrating the whole machine first. When you do another profile, let's say you want to do HDR, then I would do that as an individual all, uh, or individual, and just do that particular profile. So once you've done that, you're going to hit start, and we'll start the calibration. So the first thing it's do is going to go out and it's going to measure what our preliminary data is before we do any calibration. So it'll start throwing up different colors, different levels, and it'll measure each of those to give us kind of a before and after. And you'll see at the end of the calibration, it'll give you a before and after report um, that shows you exactly what it changed and uh, what improvement was made to the image. Once the calibration is done, um, you can do a pre and post report screen that'll show up. So as you look at the gamma and you move the mouse over it, you can see the light blue is before, the white line is the line after the calibration, and then the green line is the 2.2 gamma default as far as what the specification is. Um, so right now you can see that the white line is right on top of the green, even though you can't see the green, it is underneath there. Uh, but the light blue is before calibration, so this is default out of the box. So we did change it slightly, but not any major changes. So you can see that out of the box calibration is, is pretty close. And as we look at the color, so this is a color imagery. This is a Rec. 709. So you can see that, again, the white is after, the blue is before, and then the green is underneath the white. You can't really see it. So we're right on top of spec. So we're actually a lot better in the green component there of your primary colors is, is much accurate after the calibration. And then you also have color temp you can look at also too. And so um, if you look over here to the right, you can see the before and after and what the delta is. So, um, you know, we're really quite accurate, about almost 6,500 Kelvin. So, and also give you the primary and secondary colors so you know what they are. And you can take a screenshot of these and save them. But once you've done the calibration, if you're really happy with how the picture looks, the grayscale, look at a few images, make sure everything looks correct. If everything looks correct, then you can go ahead and hit save. If you don't hit save, it won't take the calibration to the projector. Just turn the projector off and turn it back on. It'll go back to the original settings before you did the calibration. So once you've done overall general calibration, calibration all, um, if you want to do an HDR calibration, you can go and do that also. Um, so all you would do is go to the calibration. And for HDR, you need to set the projector to HDR10. Probably default out of the box. Um, so the frame adapt needs to be turned off. So right now we have the frame adapt on. So we need to go down to picture mode and go to HDR10. And again, check your more settings, make sure your dynamic control is off, make sure your aperture is all the way open, LD power can be on high is fine. Go back out of the menu. So once we set that, what we're going to do is we're going to set HDR10 calibration. If we need to change the brightness or contrast settings for frame adapt, we could do that to match what we set for HDR10. Right now, they're just a default, so. But again, you're going to go to the Spider X. It's going to bring up internal flat fields. So you'll see the red, green, blue, yellow, white. 
shows where the sensor is positioned. We didn't change any of the positioning, so that should be all correct. So we move on to the picture mode settings for HDR10. Um, you know, all this is going to be an auto tone mapping. Clear motion drive is off. Um, color filter is in normal. Um, but you're going to change the calibration result to just calibrate individual. So we're only calibrating HDR10 uh, profile. So that way you're not affecting the SDR because you might have a different setting or gamma for HDR um, than you would for, uh, for SDR. So once you've done that, then you hit start and it's going to go through the whole calibration again for this individual profile. So it'll take another 40 minutes to do that again, but it'll give you a more accurate HDR representation of the image. So, and that's all you have to do for that. So, so once you're done, the HDR 10 settings will correlate to the frame adapt. All you have to do is go into and whatever your brightness and contrast setting is for HDR 10, set that for frame adapt and then you'll have basically the same exact settings. The frame adapt will actually change automatically from 200 nits up to 10,000 nits. So it'll go back and forth depending on what the image is. Thank you, Rob. Hey, thanks, Chris, for having me. And thank you for buying JVC.